Hey WP Campus people, uh, my name is Mim Schwab and I'm really excited to be here to talk to you about Headless WordPress, what it is and why is everyone talking about it and why does everyone seem to want it. So first just a bit about myself, um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Stratic. We're a new way of hosting and publishing your WordPress websites and we do that by converting your site to what's called a static architecture in one click and I'll get into that more. I'm formerly the CEO of a WordPress development agency called Illuminea. Uh, I built that agency up to be one of the leading agencies in Israel, uh, which is where I'm based, and working with ended up working with a lot of Israeli tech companies on their front-facing WordPress site. Also universities, by the way. We worked with uh, some of the leading universities here um, around different projects that they had and also um, the one of their computing projects which is really interesting actually uh, i've been working with wordpress about 14 years now i think it might be 15 years <laughs> time flies when you're having fun and i organized word camps which are the uh, official wordpress conferences um five times in israel which was also really fun um since the last one there hasn't been another one in israel but i do hope that we'll be able to organize one uh when covid becomes something that we can handle and still meet up in person and uh and then of course everyone's invited to come uh, i've spoken at many wordpress conferences including a number of word camps in europe uh, which is a great conference and i i hope we'll be able to meet up again at WordCamp europe in june in porto which is where it's scheduled to be i've spoken at WordCamp us london um, where they have a great community, Israel, of course, and many meetups and other industry conferences. I'm a mom of seven, actually. <laughs> and uh, you can find me on Twitter. Here's my Twitter handle. And uh, feel free to tweet at me. And you can also DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open. Okay, so let's get into uh, what Headless is. So first, let's talk about what WordPress is at the moment. So in any standard WordPress site, you have essentially two parts to it. You have the part where you log in to manage your content, and um, that's the WordPress admin, which uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with. You go to WP slash admin, you log in, and you edit your content there, your posts, your pages, whatever. Once you've made your changes in the admin and you press publish, those changes are reflected on the front end of your site, which is what the internet sees, right? So you, every site probably looks a bit different. It's using a different theme. Um, whether it's an existing theme that's been modified or a custom built theme. Um, and that's how the content is presented on the front end. In standard WordPress, it's a monolithic architecture, which means that the back end admin is tightly connected to the front end. They're actually like this. So whenever you visit the front end of the site, underneath it is your admin. And they're always tightly intertwined. Um, when we're talking about a headless implementation of WordPress, those two parts are separated. They are no longer intertwined and your WP admin, if you're using headless WordPress, is still the place where you manage your content and edit it. But in order to get that content to be reflected on the front end of your site, there are different mechanisms that you need to use. So let's just talk about what headless means. So headless means the head, which is the front end, is not connected to the back end. So this is the admin is is actually headless, and um, it's also known as decoupled. There's a number of terms around the space of headless. Uh, they all more or less refer to the same type of implementation of a site, although they can be based on different approaches. Um, so I'll get into that. When your WordPress site is decoupled or separated from the front end, when your admin is separated from the front end. That means that your front end can actually use any technology um, to be built. So when you're working with standard WordPress where it's monolithic architecture, the template or the theming um, approach needs to be based on PHP. If you've ever looked at um, WordPress theme files, you'll see that they're very heavily based on the PHP programming language. Um, that can be great for some people, but there's a lot of developers who prefer to use different technologies for building their front ends like React or Next.js. Once you've decoupled the admin from the, front, the, from the front end, you can then 
be free to use whatever technology you want to build out that front end. Um, now, I mentioned that in order to deliver the content from the admin into the front end, you need different mechanisms. Those mechanisms are known as APIs. Um, and those APIs in WordPress are either the WP REST API, which is part of WordPress core. So every WordPress site actually has a REST API. Um, and then there's another way of manipulating that API, which is called um, GraphQL. Um, and in WordPress is a specific product project called WP GraphQL, which allows you to combine um, the content that you're delivering to the front end in different ways and um, programmatically uh, display it in different ways. Um, whereas the REST API is more like a straight up, like here's a stream of content types or content posts or whatever. But and then essentially what you have is you have the, the admin, you have this REST API, which is pushing content to the front end or the front end is pulling content from here and um, that API is the only connection between these two two components. The front end can also be rendered through a static site generation process. So you can have a site where um, you are pulling with a, like an API process, but you can also generate each page so that they're pre-rendered HTML files, essentially. Um, and those two are separated from the back end. Uh, the, I'll get into the benefits of, of, of what static is. So static, um, it refers to an architecture and approach. So I mentioned earlier that there's a number of different terms and there's different terminology that can be used around the space. So far we've covered headless and I mentioned decoupled. Static is also one of the terms that can be used in this space. And what static refers to is not static as in boring, doesn't change, not dynamic. Static refers to the architecture of the site. Um, and what that means is that the site is a collection of pre-rendered static files, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, images, video files, but they're not dynamically rendered on the fly. Um, just to explain what the difference is between that and standard WordPress. So with standard WordPress, when you request to view a page on a WordPress site, WordPress actually takes that request and then builds the page for you in real time, pulls the information from the database, puts it in all the right places and builds that page for you on the front end and displays it to you. That approach is really amazing because it enables, um, sites to, to to deliver content in a very dynamic way. It can kind of mix and match the content that's being stored in the database in different ways that are helpful to the user. That's amazing. And that's one of the reasons that WordPress has grown to be such a huge player on the internet. Don't know if you're aware, but WordPress now powers something like 42.3% of the internet. And just to give you context, the next largest CMS is Shopify with 3%. So you can understand the huge gap and WordPress has grown to be such a significant player for many reasons. It's open source. Um, it's flexible, it's user-friendly, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also because it gives people the power to deliver content in such a dynamic way. When you're working with a static site, um, instead of every page going through that, pro that build process kind of thing to, to deliver the page for you, the build process happens before you view the page. And so it generates each page as a standalone HTML file. And then when you, the user, come to a statically generated site, all, you, all the site has to do is just be like, here you go, because the file's ready. The HTML file is ready. It doesn't have to be created for you. Um, the benefits of that is that when a page is already pre-rendered, it's much faster to deliver it. It doesn't have to go through that process, and that build process can be resource intensive, which impacts the load of the delivery time of a particular page, but also for the whole site, because you're not the only person visiting a page on a site, right? Other people are visiting the pages on the site, and they're also requesting um, the page to be built for them, and all that puts a load on the one server that is supporting the whole site. So once you've, had, you've um, chosen to go in a statically generated direction, Every page is lightweight, already generated, doesn't impact the load on any other pages, so everything gets delivered quickly to the user. The other benefit of running a site in a statically generated format is that um, it can be fully served up through a content delivery network, also known as a CDN. A content delivery network means that not only is 
every page um, faster to deliver because it's pre-rendered, but because it's pre-rendered, a replica of the site can be created in many uh, locations around the world. Those locations are often called edge locations. And when you are able to do that, it means that no matter where someone is geographically located, they also will have a fast experience when accessing the site. In standard WordPress, your WordPress site is hosted, hosted in a physical location. It's actually located somewhere. It's got a physical home and address on a server and that server is housed somewhere. So let's say it's in Texas. So now I am in uh, Germany and I want to view your website. It means that my request has to travel across an ocean and then it has to get the information back across the ocean. And that geographical distance actually creates a kind of lag. But once you've created replicas of the site around the world um, uh, in these edge locations, then if I'm Germany, I can then request the site from Germany, uh, from an edge location in Germany. I don't actually have to specifically be like, please show me the site from Germany. But the browser is detected as being located in Germany and the site is delivered from the, clo the closest uh, location. So that's sat static sites in a, in a nutshell. Um, today, I don't, if, I don't know how, like how long uh, many of you have been in the web development um, space, but when I started building websites, that's how I actually built sites. Every HTML page was a standalone file that I either hand coded or uh, at the time, my favorite tool was something called Dreamweaver, which some of you may be familiar with. Um, it's a great tool, but essentially, however I did it, I was creating standalone HTML files and then I would FTP it we didn't SFTP in those days. <laughs> now you do. FTP it up to a server, and um, and that was and then the site was available. That process of creating HTML files one by one is very uh, painful, and particularly as sites get bigger and you have to manage content across a large swath of pages, you end up uh, being in a very frustrating situation where you actually don't want to update your the content on your site which is not ideal, right? The point of a site is that it has content that people can read and should be updated and should be relevant and should be useful. That's also one of the reasons why WordPress became so popular because then suddenly everyone could quickly and easily update content, publish it, and then become available without having this painful one-by-one -one type of process uh, that we used to go through. Static site generation in, in 2021 is a whole other story. The resulting site is the same concept where every page is standalone HTML, but to get there, there are much more sophisticated templating systems. So you're not hand coding one by one or anything like that. You have a templating system where you update content and then it generates these pages in a more efficient and sophisticated way. So that's about static, but as I, in the first bullet point, I, I mentioned that static doesn't refer to something that's boring. And um, unfortunately, even though static is like a technical term referring to an architecture, it's not like the best branding for a web development approach because nobody enthusiastically embraces something that sounds boring or limiting, right? So to say I'm building static sites, uh, it's not the most appealing um, sounding statement. So um, someone coined the term Jamstack to replace uh, the term static to make this approach uh, more appealing to people and to help push it forward. So um, it was coined by the co-founder co of a company called Netlify, which is one of the leading companies in this space of modern web development approaches. Um, and this is, so this is yet another term, right? We've covered headless, decoupled, static, now we're going to cover Jamstack. Jamstack is kind of um, an umbrella term for these new and more modern approaches to web development. Um, and the reason that this particular term was coined is it came in opposition to the LAMP stack. So WordPress is built on the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Um, and it's considered like a legacy stack. Developers don't think it's cool. It's a stack that's been around for, I don't know, at least 20 years. In internet years, that's like a million years. <laughs> so um, 
the jam stack came in opposition to the lamp stack as okay so you guys have been using the lamp stack for a long time and it's been good for you but it's legacy so here's the next generation of web stacks and it's the jam stack so from like a sound perspective they're kind of similar jam stack refers to a general way of doing things and not a specific stack at first it was meant to refer to kind of a more specific stack but um that didn't really work out because there's so many different ways of building headless to coupled um, static websites. You can use so many different technologies for your front end. You can use many different API approaches. You can store the sites on different servers, use different CDNs, use different serverless functions. Serverless is another term in the space, by the way. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get into that. So, um, so it's not something that you can really like nail down like LAMP. Um, so it's, it's more about a general, almost like an ethos or a philosophy behind web development. Um, and this is the general statement, decoupling the front end web layer from the back end business logic layer. Um, also, there's a lot of community discussion around what Jamstack means now that it doesn't mean something specific. Um, and uh, one of the statements is more like um, static first. So the idea is that the statically generated site can cover a lot of ground because if you think about it, most sites and most content on sites that you're visiting, let's say it's content pages, they don't need to be dynamically generated. It is what it is, and it's fine to serve it up in a pre-rendered format pretty much all the time. But there's some functionality that doesn't work well in that format. So let's say user, uh, user logins for accessing gated content. So then you, it, you may want to use uh, a more dynamic approach or a stat or server side rendering approach. And then in that case, that site is static first, as in wherever possible, it uses a static approach, but wherever it makes sense, it uses dynamic. Um, so that's another kind of uh, discussion around Jamstack and the approach. It's about pre, so static first is about pre-rendering as much as possible. By pre-rendering as much as possible, you're really taking a load off of the web. Um, you're doing the, the, the rendering once. And then everyone benefits from that. Whereas with uh, standard CMSs or LAMP based CMSs like WordPress, that's not the case. I mean, unless you have a really good caching system in place, but I'm not getting, going, going to get into that because caching well is challenging. So um, when you've pre-rendered once and then everyone benefits from that, you've created um, a much lighter weight delivery system, which uh, makes the web faster. And also it's potentially better for the environment actually because when you're not using as many resources to generate the page for everyone, uh, you're using you know, less uh, energy and that's just generally better for the environment. Um, I mentioned server-side rendering for particular components. So the, the Jamstack community um, has been enthusiastically talking recently about SSR, which is means server-side rendering. And, and they talk about it as if it's this like exciting new approach to web development, but WordPress is all about server-side rendering <laughs> and so many platforms are. It's nothing new, but it's like the Jamstack community doesn't want to ever sound too much like it's legacy. So then they come up with new terms like SSR and you're just like, okay, we've been doing that for like 30 years. Um, so I mentioned that Jamstack at first referred to a particular architecture. So at first, the Jamstack term was J-A-M in capital because it referred to JavaScript, APIs, and markup. Um, the idea being that the site was all about like the front end and that worked for a while, except for that, if you think about it, that's such a general term, like a stack that even WordPress sites are JavaScript APIs and markup. <laughs> so that markup is like HTML essentially. So, uh, then the community was like, all right, that's not really relevant anymore. So we're just going to make it Jamstack. So now it's more like a general approach to things. So there's overlap between all these terms as I mentioned, and um, they all in the end apply to this kind of decoupled architecture where you have a, like a pre-rendered static front end. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of dependency or um, applicability of APIs in the, in the structure. So why do people want to use headless? So there was a developer survey conducted in 2020 of 65,000 developers. And they asked them a lot of questions, but one of them was, what is their most dreaded platform? And one of them, and the top one was WordPress. WordPress is um, not something the developers love to work with. And why does that matter? Because in order for any software or technology to um, continue to thrive, it's really important that it has an active, enthusiastic developer community behind it. 
And when you have these types of results, you have to be like, oh, hey, how can we make WordPress more appealing to developers to keep it alive and well uh, for the longer term? Why don't developers like WordPress? And um, these are pains that anyone I think can relate to um, in, or has, has experienced at some point in time, even if they're not actually a developer. Uh, WordPress's performance can be slow when it comes to the pre the the generating on the fly um, approach that I mentioned. Um, also, server load. It's hard to optimize your servers, etc. Um, it's hard to scale WordPress. So if you suddenly get an influx of traffic, uh, you know your scale your server might not be able to handle it, or you have to throw more resources at, at it, which can get very expensive. Um, and it's almost like just when you need your site to be up and alive the most because it's like getting a lot of attention that's when it might fail you um also it can be kind of easy to ddos um a wordpress site ddos is um when a site is hit with a lot of requests that aren't for real it's not like oh well, my site was mentioned in cnn now the whole world visiting it it's more like bots are hammering my site to take it down it's a malicious uh way to take down a site um so scaling can be an issue security um, and I'll explain why security is, uh, is a challenge in WordPress, but, um, you know, at least twice a week, there's some vulnerability that's published in a WordPress plugin that's installed in hundreds of thousands or millions of sites. And, um, that's a constant ongoing threat and it's legacy. So it's not the most appealing to, to many developers, I'm not saying all developers, there are many developers who enthusiastically embrace WordPress and work with it, but that survey clearly indicates that it's, that's not across the board. So with regards to security, in any WordPress site, you have many layers of stuff happening. Apache is the operating system, which is like the underlying layer. You have PHP running, you have MySQL, you have WordPress itself, and any site has plugins installed, like pretty much every site has plugins installed, and that the number of plugins can range from one to tens of plugins. Each one of those plugins is a piece of software that um, needs maintenance and um, needs to be properly coded, and we're just Kind of dropping it into our sites and hoping that the developer that stands behind it has developed it in a high quality way that's not it's, it it can often be the case it's not always the case and even if it isn't the case just like with any piece of software there could be a vulnerability and then when there is a vulnerability even if the developer patches it quickly that still leaves a window of opportunity for the hacker bots um, for many sites that haven't yet updated the plugin on their site so you have a lot of layers of potential vulnerabilities and also potential issues with regards to performance um, or reliability. So there's a lot happening in WordPress site that makes it can make it complicated to maintain. So what are some of the benefits of, of a headless or decoupled or static or Jamstack approach to WordPress? It's, it's fast. Performance is effortless. Um, and uh, as opposed to a standard WordPress where it can demand more intervention and tweaking. The attack surface is reduced by over 99%, so those layers of potential security issues are not actually relevant on a statically generated site because there is no underlying processing server. There are no plugins. It's all just front-end, HTML, CSS, and it's much, much harder to um, breach a site that's based on static files, so it's almost not worth the hacker's effort. They'll just move on to the next site looking for a WordPress site with a vulnerability. It's effortlessly scalable. It's more modern. It's like the shiny tool that developers like. Less WP Ops. I really like this term when I saw it. So there's a lot of terms around ops um, out there like DevOps and FinOps and I just saw a lot of ops. So this is specifically to WordPress, which is the effort needed to maintain a WordPress site and its, and its environment and its servers. Um, if you're using Headless in a particular way, you can actually use WordPress as you're used to. You don't have to change um, change your tooling and we'll get into that so first of all when you're running a statically generated site there is no database um, and that can be very limiting because a lot of uh, functionality is database driven even on the front end so some examples are forms comments search e-commerce memberships forums ajax get requests infinite scrolling redirections multi-language plugins password protected pages scheduled posts relative dates these are just some examples of uh, functionality that depends on the underlying processing server and the database. Um, there are ways to overcome it, and I'll get to that. 
but just it's important to be aware that when you're building a site that's going to be delivered in a headless or static format, you need to keep in mind um, it's it's almost like a mind shift. Okay, so instead of doing things this way, I'll do it that way. It's not like these these types of functionality cannot exist on a Jamstack site. They can. It's it's about different approaches. So here's just some tools that you can use when if you want to build out a, a headless WordPress site. So the WP REST API, which is as I mentioned, part of WordPress core. WP GraphQL, which is a project that makes um, the REST API more malleable. I guess you can say you can look it up. Um, Netlify and Gatsby both aim to support headless WordPress in different ways. Uh, it's definitely much more complicated to build a site that can work in a headless format and deliver it through Netlify or Gatsby, but they both have documentation around it and you can check it out. When you have a decoupled site, you can no longer use page builders like Elementor. Um, Elementor depends on the fact that it, what you're doing is tightly integrated with the front end. And that's no longer the case in these types of sites. And you need to create, recreate common WordPress functionality. In general, it demands much more developer resources, both to build the site and then to maintain it. Stuff that we take for granted in WordPress and is just included out of the box needs to be developed by developers on um, a decoupled architecture, much more. Um, there's a much more need, of a need for that. And, um, and that's on an ongoing basis. And for example, because you can't use page builders to let's say quickly build a new page layout, you'll need more developer resources for that as well. So this experience can be very frustrating for non-developers. With stat, if you want to build a static site, there's a number of ways that you can do that. So um, there's, these are two, the two most popular plugins for doing so. You install it in WordPress. You have to create the environment where you have WordPress separate, and then you have a static server for um, collecting and delivering static files. But these plugins essentially generate a static replica of your WordPress site. So it looks the same, it acts the same, um, but it's just a collection of static files. These plugins are free. They give you all the benefits of static. You can choose your own hosting environment. You're not like limited in that way, but they can be very complicated to configure and um, scale. It's hard to make sure that your site's being generated properly and that it doesn't take too long, etc. And you still are responsible for securing your WordPress site because your WordPress site is hosted somewhere and you're the one hosting it or at least maintaining it. You need to make sure that um, it's, it's not accessible or that it's, it's fully secure and always updated. It's, it's something you need to think about. And also it does, it does lack certain WordPress functionality because of this decoupled architecture. Then there's Stratic, which is our approach to um, statically generating WordPress sites. Um, Strat Stratic is an end-to-end -end platform. So you have uh, WordPress and it's in a containerized hosting environment. Containerized just means that it shuts down when not in use, which is an additional layer of security, also an additional, also an additional environmental benefit because it's not constantly using resources. Um, it only is alive when needed to edit the content. Um, that containerized environment is also secured by us and it's blocked from the rest of the internet. So you don't have to worry about the security aspects of WordPress anymore. Even if you're running an outdated vulnerable plugin, it's generally recommended to update it, but you don't have to do that um, in a panicky way where, oh my gosh, we better update it at two in the morning uh, just to make sure that that hole isn't available to all the ha hacker bots. Uh, Stratic configures everything for you so you don't have to set up all the environments. You just um, sign up for Stratic and you get the WordPress environment, the static hosting environment, the CDN, the SSL and everything. You can continue using WordPress as usual so you don't have to learn new tooling. And if you have an existing WordPress site, you don't have to throw it away and build something new to get the benefits of headless and static. You just use WordPress as usual in the, in the containerized hosting environment. And again, all it means is you log in and you access your WordPress site. Um, you don't need to redo your site. You get staging sites. So we, all, we have um, staging versions of the WordPress site itself, but also of the static site. So let's say you make changes to your WordPress site. You want to make sure it works well on static. You have a preview static site and a production static site. So you can first deploy it to preview, check everything looks okay review it with your team, and once everything looks good, only then deploy it to the production static version of the site. And because we want to keep the user experience as aligned as possible with the native WordPress experience, we rolled out um, native support for certain types of database-driven database functionality. So I listed a 
number of different types of functionality that are challenging to support and deploy to static and headless architecture. But on Stratic, you don't have to change your behavior. We just support it on the static replica. So forms, 301 redirects, search, uh, WordPress multi-language plugins, RSS feeds are all there. Um, you have user management in the WordPress site, uh, etc. All of this can work well, regardless of whether you're static or not, if you have a static first mindset. So what does that mean? If you're going to have forms on your site, if you're on Stratic, you can use Gravity Forms or Contact Form 7, but you could also use any one of many form solutions that are out there that don't process form submissions through WordPress site. So like HubSpot Forms, MailChimp Forms, Marketo, Salesforce, and there's many, many other, Wufoo. You can embed those forms on your site and they'll work perfectly even on the static uh, version because they're not processing, sending form submissions into WordPress to be pro processed. They're sending them straight into those systems. Um, in order to help people have a static first mindset, we created a static tools directory on Stratic, uh, which you can find at this URL, stratic.com slash static tools. And you can find tools um, in different categories. So you can see um, analytics, audio, comments, donations, that all work perfectly on the static version of the site. Um, and also the tools that we have rolled out native support for are in this directory, but you can see you can use the page builder like Beaver Builder, um, etc. So you can browse that tools directory. It might be useful to you to see what types of functionality you can use on static. One of the good things in terms of timing is that because there's this um, trend of Jamstack, there's a lot of tooling that's being developed and offered that works perfectly on headless and static sites. And so we have a lot to pick and choose from. I like to refer to this approach as having your cake and eating it too. I like cake and I like to eat it. <laughs> so here is our two cakes. They look exactly the same, but actually one is your dynamic WordPress site and one is your static site. They look and act the same. If you go to stratic.com, that's the statically generated version of a WordPress site. If you saw the WordPress site, you would see it looks exactly the same. Um, but the static version of the site is, of course, much faster, much more scalable. We don't have to think about it. We don't have to worry about whether it will crash or have issues. There's no white screen of death issues, none of that. It just keeps humming along, um, but it looks the same as the WordPress site. Um, among many, we have a lot of different customers, types of customers, smaller businesses, tech companies. One of them is Payoneer and um, they're a big FinTech company their conversion rates increased significantly just after moving to Stratic without changing anything on their end. So um, deploying a site as static uh, right away out of, out of the gate, users can see a lot of improvements on how their site's performing. Um, so we wrote a static first guide to WordPress as well, which you can download here. And uh, it goes through what it means to run a static, statically generated site, what you need to keep in mind, and some different approaches for different aspects of it. So um, you might find that useful. It's a free download. So you can go to bit.ly slash static dash first dash WP. And also, special treat, we'd like to offer WP Campus participants six months free at Stratic. All you have to do is go to this URL and this landing page and enter your email and sign up for Stratic. And you will have six months um, free hosting on Stratic. And our support is very good, so just chat to us at any time in the chat bubble on the bottom right corner, and we'll be happy to help you if you have any questions along the way, or, or you know, maybe your first version of your static site didn't generate properly. We always have solutions, so just reach out, and uh, we'll help you out. Thank you. So that's my talk about static, headless, jamstack, a couple <laughs> WordPress. Uh, I know that was a lot, but uh, as I mentioned, I'm available on Twitter, so you can just reach out with questions, and we're going to have a Q&A, so I will be here to answer that as well. Thanks.